Good evening, Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. Uh, last year, we had a lot of uh, discussion, talk, dialogue on something quite macro, you know, on regional issue, global issue, security issue, ASEAN, so many different things. I thought that to start the new year, we'll probably uh, start with the private sector because to give an upbeat sense that, you know, at the end of the day, economic growth starts from the private sector. And today I have the pleasure to have a good friend of mine, uh, Paul Popelier. He's a Dutch national, but so I should say Paul Popelier. Um, Paul is with the, the biggest uh, company, drink company in the world, Coca-Cola. And I'm just happy that he's willing to come, you know, on short notice to share with us a bit about what Coca-Cola is doing in Cambodia, what's their strategy, what are they doing to help, uh, you know, the corporate social responsibility, helping the youth, job employment, that sort of thing. And I, I'm just happy that we, we could engage a discussion with a multinational, a company that transcends, you know, every uh, country in the world. And we hope that uh, some, some of us will be watching, would be learning something that can apply to uh, their life. So, Paul, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Pan. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes. Well, just a background. Uh, Paul, as I said earlier, Paul is a, is a Dutch national. He has an MBA in, from the University of Amsterdam and a diploma of Program for Executive Development at IMD in Lausanne, Switzerland. Right? That's correct. Yes. Uh, he worked for the two biggest, uh, one is the biggest food company, Nestle, everybody knows Nestle, and then the second uh, one, which is also the biggest, but not in food, but in food, uh, in drink, which is Coca-Cola. So you cannot have somebody who know more about food and drink, you know, to come and share with us today the experience. Uh, Paul has pretty much uh, traveled around the world for 10 countries, U.S., India, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Vietnam, and now Cambodia, where he's currently the general manager for Coca-Cola. You speak a lot of language, a full language. And you're very involved also in many of the, you know, uh, chambers in Cambodia. So, quite a distinguished career. But, Paul, Coca-Cola is such a big company, but I don't think that many people understand, you know, uh, or know where Coca-Cola come in? They just drink, they know it's a good drink, good company, but please, could you share a bit, you know, the yeah, background, I mean, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, there's a lot of history behind Coca-Cola, and would like to go back uh, 126 years in time to 1886 in um, Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States, when a, a pharmacist by the name of Pemberton created a caramel colored, very tasty brew, so to say, um, that um, he uh, started selling to um, soda fountain shops. Where okay. He mixed the brew with okay. uh, uh, soda fountain, and they figured out that it was very tasty and refreshing, and that's what it still is um, uh, today. Have, have, have they made ice yet in those days? Ice. Ice, you know, in those days. Do they have ice yet? I don't think so. Ah, yet. okay, okay. I'm not sure, but I don't yes. think so. Yeah. Um, the, the brand, which is nowadays the most renowned brand in the world, was um, not created by an advertising agency, but simply by the bookkeeper. Is that he right? came up with the name and he came up with the, the way of writing. It hasn't been changed uh, ever since. Wow. The, uh, the business was sold by, by Pemberton after five years already for mm -hmm. $2,000. That's it. Right. Now we fast forward 121 100. years, we come yeah. to today. Yes. Business is meanwhile worth. 170 billion dollars. That's the uh, the market cap of of the Coca-Cola company. 170 billion. That's right. Right. Um, I, I don't know how many zero, but it's okay. Yeah, Good. let alone in reals. Yes, um, yes. The yes. Uh, the brand Coca-Cola by itself hmm. has a value of 70 billion. Meanwhile, there's not one brand, but there are 500 brands. 500 brands. 18 out of the 500 brands sell more than a billion in revenue per year. Company has um, almost a million employees, including the bottling uh, companies. So you're one of the million then? I'm <laughs> yeah, you picked one of the million for yes. today's interview. <laughs> um, um, 
uh, there is um, a, a consumption of 1.8 billion servings per day. Wow, one on in four that's people right, in the world. Seven billion population, so one in four uh, consume um, uh, one of the Coca-Cola beverages um, per, per day. Uh, Coca-Cola is still the most recognized trademark in the world. Mm -hmm. Ninety-eight percent of the people, literate or illiterate, would recognize uh, the brand. The Coca-Cola company has an entity. I think I'm entitled to say in more countries than the United Nations. If I'm correct, the United Nations is 192 countries. Yes, and yes. And Coca-Cola is 207. Basically, every country except uh, North Korea and and Cuba. So yeah, that's uh, what the company is nowadays, and that's. Like well, so you are more universal than the UN. You could argue so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the secret formula. Yeah, that's kept um, secret now for 126 years. There yes. are people claiming to know it. You Google it, and you 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 get some answers, but it's not known. Uh, wow, unbelievable! Yeah. In Cambodia, what is Coca-Cola doing? Of Give course, a smaller yeah. scale than yes, um, yes, than. Yes. Uh, so we are one of the 207 country. That's right. Um, we um, are present in Cambodia through imports mm. since 50 years. Mm. Uh, we have an entity since 20 years. Yes. Um, the brands, and I hope you will know most of them, yeah. includes Coca-Cola, Fanta, Sprite, mm. uh, Schweppes, mm. Lasani Water, and Samurai Energy Drink. Yeah. We sell basically all what we call pack formats you can think of. So the returnable glass bottle, mm, okay. the cans, the, yes. the PET or the plastic bottle. Yes. We have the fountain system in quick service restaurants. Mm. Um, we have um, about four, 500 employees. Hmm. Um, and that's a big difference because three years ago it was only uh, 300 and now close to 500. Uh, proud to say that 99.5% p- uh, of the employees are Cambodians. Ah, really? Only three foreigners in the company. Wow. And, and these are direct employment? That's direct You're employment. not talking about the multiplier effect? Well, thanks for asking that because we have a, a, a sort of rule of thumb. Yes. That for any every employee that we, we have, hmm. you could roughly say that there are 10 people indirectly employed. Is that right? So you're talking S- about suppliers, such a high multiplier. trucking companies, uh, people growing sugar, hmm. advertising agency, everything, retailers, hmm. Hmm. everything combined, we roughly say that's times 10, so there's, there's an indirect employment of, of uh, 5,000 people. Wow, it's quite, you know, exciting. and. So you, you, so your success in Cambodia is due to premature. What, 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 what generate behind that? Of course, it it is a Coca-Cola yeah, business strategy and everything. But oh, doing business in Cambodia, what what do you take of that? Let's uh, let's uh, what to split my answer. What what okay. I think is very good in doing business in okay. Cambodia and what what we call where there's room yes. for improvement. Okay. Um, what we really like about uh, doing business in Cambodia is that 100% foreign uh, ownership is allowed. Mm-hmm. There is a free exchange of currencies. Okay. Money, money, change dollars to euros or the mm. real, it doesn't yes. matter. There's a free um, inflow and outflow of money into the country or okay. out of the country without restrictions. So um, you still have to pay withholding, right? So it's okay. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. On services, you yes, pay yes. withholding sure. tax. Yeah. Um, there are uh, interesting benefits, um, incentives like the QIP mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, uh, investments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say there's a political, uh, stable political environment. Okay. And, and last but not least, um, uh, we think that the people of Cambodia, mm. our employees, are very positive-minded. Yes. Okay. They really think about the future. They're eager to learn. They're yeah. eager to progress. So um, these are all the positives. And. Uh, when well, you mentioned positive, you have to mention the something down there. Yeah. We think um, might uh, need a little bit of, of, of improvement yeah. um, is education, mm-hmm. capability. In what way? By, by education is in what way? We think overall that the capability is not completely up to world standard. Okay, okay. Um, uh, From a technical aspect, right? General. General, okay. Yeah. Technical, but, but general, on, on many, many uh, functions. Yes. Um, and I think it's particularly important with um, the uh, opening up 
coming up of ASEAN mm -hmm. labor mm -hmm. yes yes uh, in yes. 2015 there's okay. even more okay. reason to to address uh, uh, that issue mm. um, infrastructure could be improved uh, electricity for example yeah well, I was I was referring to roads but you're right ah, another okay. point would be okay uh, power supply and yes. uh, I would say particularly power cost. Yes, yes. Um, power is mm. quite expensive in, in Cambodia, particularly in the rural areas. Okay, okay. Um, and then the legal system, okay. slash the, the, mm. the, the corruption. Sure, sure. Again, there, there, mm. there is some, okay. some room okay. for improvement yeah, yeah. On, on that one. But in so balance, we are very positive about okay. All right. doing business here. Mm. That's why we're here for 20 years and we want to years. stay for another whatever number of years. So. Good, I hope you stay for a long, long time in Cambodia. Uh, but, you know, so, so these are the, the business environment that make you go, but the company itself, you have to have your own, you know, driver, what's the success story behind it, you know, what motivates, you know, your, your brand preference, the growth, your market share, everything. Something is, yeah, of course, you shouldn't tell me all the trade secret, of course. Yeah, well, th you're right, I can't, tell all the, 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 the things we do. Particularly you're on air, so... <laughs> the, the things I would, um, I'm able to share with you is, is that we are a strong believer in, in brand equity. We, okay. we have very strong brands and we always have strong brands. We, we don't like discounting and on price. We rather grow consumption and, and, and make the brands relevant to the consumer. Okay. Um, we've been quite successful with the introduction of new products. Okay. Uh, we launched the uh, Dasani water and particularly Samurai uh, Energy Drink is mm. extremely mm. successful at yes, the moment. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, we pay a lot of attention to what we do in the trade, in the retail outlet. And in general terms, what we do is like a, a channel-specific execution. We do certain things in wholesalers. Mm. We might do other things in eating and drinking outlets. Okay. We do, again, okay. different things in mom and pop stores on yes. the sidewalk. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what we call channel-specific uh, mm. um, uh, execution that reach yes. out, reaching out to the final consumer through the retail. Yes, that's a crucial point of uh, our strategy. Yes, and if I may share the results of all of this is that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this year the company is growing in volume in liters by more than thirty percent. Thirty percent? Wow, that's in high growth. More than thirty percent in dollars. We're growing more than forty um, percent. My, my. Uh, we have a market share of um, more than seventy percent in our closest competitor is less than 15 percent. You're kidding me. Uh, and what is particularly important, and that links back to the brand equity that mm. I mentioned, mm. Um, mm. if you ask 100 consumers what is your favorite sparkling soft drink, mm. then 73 will say Coca-Cola. Including my son, you know. Including your son, and yeah. only three <laughs> will say our, say, let's say, our nearest rival in, in cola. Yes, yes. So that's, wow, uh, that's uh, a proof that our building of brand equity and brand mm. preference has been working mm. uh, uh, very well in Cambodia. Yeah, but uh, Paul, you know, that, that's how you succeed, but I'm pretty sure behind all that, there is a, a, a very strong uh, business ethics, the integrity, you know, how you, you value yourself as a good corporate citizen, you know, that sort of thing, corporate social responsibility. You know, uh, can you tell me a bit about this soft dimension that not many people know because they see the company, but they see the infrastructure, they see this big plan. But I think the plan is good, but it's the software behind, the human dimension, the respect of the uh, workers' right, that sort of thing. These are important. You're absolutely right. And then and I relate back again to the Coca-Cola company from a global perspective. Mm -hmm. um, the Coca-Cola company and all the butlers appointed by the Coca-Cola company yes. apply the same rules wherever they are, mm. whether it's the United States or mm. the Netherlands or Mexico or Cambodia, same rules. Same rule. We always comply with local regulation okay. around the world. Yes. And um, as an example, we pay every dollar or real mm. of tax that we should pay. Mm. And to put things in perspective, this year we will pay around six million dollars in, in taxes. Wow. That's a total of VAT and excise yes, tax yes. and corporate tax, you name it, everything mm. combined is six we million. We love company like that. <laughs> six million dollars. Um, you touched on it already. Um, the workplace rights, mm. the, 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 
the rights of the employees. Mm -hmm. We apply again the same around yes. the world: no child labor, mm. uh, no forced labor, no respect for overtime. Good code of conduct. Huh? Good code of conduct. Yeah, that, and, yeah, and all of this and more is stipulated yeah. in what we call the uh, the Coca-Cola Code of Business Conduct. Ah, okay, okay. That's a 50-page document <laughs> available yeah. in 29 languages. Including Cambodia? Including Khmer. Um, Beautiful. We have a 24-hour, uh, seven days a week ethics line. That's a free line that people can call or actually also email. Hmm. Um, if there's anything that they think is non-compliant. Ah, interesting. Again, available in, in Khmer. Yes. Um, but what is also important is that um, as a 100% American company, yes, yes. we have to comply with the foreign... Uh, anti-corruption practice. Yes, yes. And that's also very uh, stringent. Mm. So, so, so you can relate to a Cambodian uh, anti-corruption unit, the law and everything. We embrace it like anything else. Beautiful. So, um, we, the the anti-corruption unit and the anti-corruption law is, is exactly in line with what I just mentioned. Beautiful. So we think it's a great initiative and mm, mm. Uh, we think it's on, on, on track, we're not mm. there yet. Yes, yes. Um, but we really hope that that's mm. um, uh, successful. So this is serious stuff. I mean, the code of business conduct yeah. is as far as it uh, would give five dollars to a policeman, mm. I can be in trouble. So yes. Now, we, we, we move to something that is quite interesting from my perspective whenever I, I talk to a multinational is basically the corporate social responsibility. For sure, Coca-Cola have plenty, but can you cite a few that you're proud of that you do in Cambodia, for example? Yeah, we, we try to um, limit it to three main topics. Okay. Um, one is related to education. And yes, that's important. Yeah. Yes. Uh, second is about women empowerment. Mm, ah. And third is everything related to water. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because you're in drinking. We consume a lot of water, so yes. that, that's why we take that cons responsibility. Um, I can give you a few examples. Mm -hmm. um, first on education. Yeah. Um, we organize ourselves, um, we call it a career forum, whereby we go to universities and we, we basically prepare fresh graduates okay. on how to apply for a job, how to do an interview and how to build a career. Yes. Um, we are a, a major sponsorship of ISEC. Okay. Well, ISEC, well, 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 ISEC. It's an international student exchange program. Okay. So I, is that a French organization? It's a French name, but originates in in Sweden. Ah, okay. Um, so it's basically for Cambodians who want to do an internship okay. abroad, or yeah. foreign uh, students who want to do. But still in the Coca-Cola. No, this is completely independent. Ah, independent. Yeah. yeah. It's. Um, I think it's present in around 100 countries in the world. Okay. Uh, it has nothing to do uh, with Coca-Cola per se. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, we are uh, a main sponsor of JCI, that's Junior Chamber International in, in, in Cambodia. Okay. With whom we work on career programs. Um, we have our own program of what we call GITs, mm. uh, graduates in trainee. Okay. These are management um, trainees. So Fresh graduates coming from yeah, yeah. Um, uh, universities who will be trained by us. Okay. Sort of. Uh, wow. So, so a lot in the area of the education, career development, first entry point into the marketplace. Yeah. Proud to share. Yeah. Another point is that we gave away scholarships yes. together with uh, youth volunteers mm, Cambodia. Mm, mm. So yeah, you're right. We do a lot in that mm, part because mm. we also said it's one of the weaker uh, areas. Okay. Then the second one is women empowerment. Yes, this is very important because, you know, uh, the majority of the workforce are women and I know that the Ministry of Women Affairs, Minister Pavi, is very active. I hope you're doing something with her also. We do. We did speak to her and we did share with her an initiative. Um, it's a global initiative. Mm. It's called 5 by 20 in short. Yeah. And it stands for um, 5 million um, women to be empowered into jobs okay. by the year 2020. Mm. So in short, the Coca-Cola company wants to um, to employ indirectly mm. uh, five extra additional women mm. uh, around the globe uh, by 2020, 2020. Wow. Okay. And to put things in perspective, we've got a million employees. Yeah. So five million indirect female employees to be added. A typical example would be that um, in a rural area, Yes. 
a lady is given um, a piece of equipment to start selling coke. Okay. She was give, will be given some training on okay. selling techniques, mm. uh, how to do bookkeeping and stuff. Yes. Uh, we might, if needed, give some microfinance support to get the business rolling, started and yeah. rolling. Um, so that would be um, a typical uh, example. Okay. We also work with the Cambodian Women Entrepreneur Association. Mm. Ah, okay, okay, okay. At the provincial level, I hope. I believe so. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. All right. Uh, so yeah, these are a typical a few um, mm. examples what we do in, in, in uh, women empowerment. Yes, yes. And the third uh, pocket mm. uh, is everything related to, to water. Oh, oh, what do you mean by that? Because water, you know, we see every day, we, we take for granted, you know. Yeah, we, we use so much water that we take responsibility for it, that mm. we, what we return to nature is clean yes. and um, there's also a global objective that mm. By the year 2020, again, mm. we in, in simple terms, we want to go f give back to nature mm. Mm. as much as, yes. we, as we take. Yes. Um, and that could be in all kinds of forms. And uh, as an example, what we do here, I'll give you um, uh, two examples. Okay. Uh, one, one is in, in particularly in Kampong Spui, where okay. we work with um, CWPD, the Cambodian Women for Peace and Development. Yes. They help us in in installing bore wells, uh, giving away ceramic um, water filters yes. to uh, the less fortunate in, in this country. Mm. Um, and we work with UN Habitat on similar initiatives. Okay. And in this case, particularly in, in Kandal, um, Kandal province. Yes, yes. Uh, to put things in perspective on both initiatives, we spend some 50 to $75,000 uh, mm. each uh, per year. So quite so, so I think you, you have a very comprehensive uh, corporate social responsibility program. Huh? So I, I, I must say that uh, employment, education, youth empowerment, women empowerment, I mean this is quite important, you know, because uh, I see that, uh, you know, for, for example in the context of uh, the last element that you mentioned about water, you know, in the world now is a lot of concern, you know, the, at the Rio Plus conference, uh, you know, mid of this year, you know, the issue of water come up quite prominently, climate change, all these are affecting the environment. Mm. And more and more companies are conscious of the need to give back, you know, to the environment what it took back. You know, so, and this is something quite uh, important because most of us, I say, take for granted. You know, we see water, we say, okay, it's there, you know, but we never realize that the action we do, in fact, you know, cause, you know, problem for us in the future. Yeah. So, so this is good, and in if you can sort of like multiply effect the the campaign awareness, that's going to be quite uh, interesting, and also get other company in the same similar industry to yeah. to appreciate that. Yeah. Related to that, if I may give another example, yeah. we measure um, very strictly how much water we use mm -hmm. for every liter of beverage. We produce. Okay. You can imagine for one liter of beverage, you need more than one liter <laughs> Is of right? water. You yeah. need cleaning of the plant, cleaning yes. of the equipment, yes. sometimes cleaning of, uh, of glass bottles that mm. come back from the market. All of this combined mm. is measured. And there are very, very strict mm. um, guidelines and, and, mm. and uh, pressure to reduce that mm. number every single year. So, 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 so basically, you, you, you have to care also about the carbon footprint also, right? There's a link to that uh, as well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now, I think for the next uh, couple of years, you know, we're already talking about the post-2015 where it's achieving the million development goal is not enough. You have to move to sustainable development goal, which is Absolutely. which is one, uh, some initiative that you're doing now. It's, it's fit to it. Education, empowerment, women empowerment, youth em empowerment, water, environment, all these things, uh, you're already uh, helping uh, shape a bit the future. So I hope uh, this is a good example for other countries. Anyway, we're running out of time and uh, I always like to have my guests have a last few words to share to the audience. So what, what, what's the message uh, that you, you care to share? Coming from a perspective of a global company, but you know, also doing something so micro that touch the life of the poor, for example. What's right. your message? Um, in that case, I would um, like to address the, the youth of Cambodia. 
um, because they are such a vast majority of the country and basically that's the future of, of Cambodia. And I would like um, to quote Steve Jobs of Apple, who is regretfully no longer here, um, because I think he gave three pieces of advice that are very relevant um, to me. Um, and it's one that you have to fully and generally believe in your capabilities in the future and what you can do in the future. Uh, two, you really have to find something that you love to do. If not, keep on trying to find something that you really love to do. And third is live every day as if it's the last day. Really enjoy every day as if it's the last day. These are the three um, pieces of advice. I would like to quote from Steve Jobs because I think they are very, very um, correct. Well, Paul, I mean, let me just say on behalf of the audience uh, a big thanks for you uh, coming from a very big company and sharing some very practical experience that can touch the life of the youth who at this point in time may not know where the future lies. Absolutely. And I think, you know, capturing their mind, giving them a sense of guidance, of can do, that if somebody, you know, way back a hundred some years ago could have one idea. And this is where I see the power of intellectual property, you know. Intellectual property, right, protection, it all start with one intellectual idea, right? right. And Coca-Cola probably represent this journey, you know, uh, uh, from a very small one, and then fast forward a hundred some years later to be the global giant, you know, of the world. And then you end up coding another big giant, Steve Jobs, you know, of Apple. And so this, this few giants should stimulate the Cambodia youth, you know, the, the, the woman, the woman who, who who now see their life as uh, being disadvantaged. There's a sense in life that, you know, you, you can do things, but you must believe in yourself, and your sharing is very, very much appreciated. My pleasure. So, yeah, Paul, thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're coming to the end of the show, but uh, I, I like to pretty much recap a bit what I, myself, you know, uh, being uh, some people think that, well, I, I suppose I have a dialogue and I suppose to know things, but I don't know a lot of things. And I always like uh, the spontaneity of, uh, you know, this, this dialogue because you can learn so much on something that you thought you knew. Uh, what, what really motivates me in having Paul to come here today is give a sense of can-do attitude that you don't have to be just a big giant to do the right thing, you know, uh, for your environment, for your society, for your community, for yourself. But every action of every individual combined all together will make our society stronger. We have to care of the environment because if the environment is no good, where's our future lies? You know, our health be affected, you know, uh, then we end up spending all our money we earn in, in medicine. And then our workplace uh, will not be a good place. So, so you see, life is all interacted. And to hear from somebody from a big company like Coca-Cola, how they also, of course, they have to make profit, but there's a sense of corporate social responsibility for the community, but also another sense of promoting, you know, the future generation of global citizens in the world to start caring about the environment. So that's probably something I would retain from this dialogue, which is protect your environment, think of the future, but dare to do, you know, saying you believe it's right. So on that note, I want to say good night and I'll see you next week. <laughs>